outpost Infinity Siege is like chucking a bunch of diehard gamers into the developer's seat. Imagine Halo and StarCraft making sweet, sweet love and sitting in the cuck chair watching on is Kingdom Rush. That's the spicy mix that cooks up outpost Infinity Siege. And blimey, against all odds, it somehow manages to juggle its bits and bobs without the game being a total disaster. But sadly, when it's crunch time, all the areas of the game come up a bit short, like a pickpocket at a nudist beach. It lacks the finesse, the sharp execution, to truly keep your attention when it counts. You walk away wondering just how brilliant could this game have been. So, is it still worth your money? Well, grab yourself a cuppa and let's chat all in today's review. Explaining Outpost Infinity Siege is like trying to describe the colour of the wind. At its heart, it's a first-person shooter where you're blasting away at an army of mechs on rather small maps. But here's the twist, right? With a flick of your finger, you're suddenly playing Maestro in an RTS, building turrets and rustling up resources like you're running a market stall. After you've done your bit of the hustle, you get to extract your spoils come the mission end, allowing you to soup up your outpost until it's a one-man, well, rather one-monster, army ready to take on the hordes and we ain't chatting about a handful of troublemakers here people we're talking hundreds of the buggers swarming your doorstep making a strong outpost as crucial as a good pint on a friday night the tutorial though utter dog shy absolute dog's dinner but if you're looking to get a sneak peek at the grand scale of what lays before you the tutorial chucks you straight in to the deep end with a fully kitted out outpost your screen swarming with more enemies than you'd find at a dodgy kebab shop at closing time and there's a mountain more to dig through and suss out here too and funny enough You've got to slog through a few hours what can only be described as narrative twaddle before the game even starts to sparkle with any interest. A little nudge for you gents though, keep your peepers peeled for this beauty. It's your sign that you're about to peel back the layers of what this game has to offer. The mission structure in Outpost Infinity Siege effectively takes you on tours which are comprised of multiple smaller missions. You start off on a mini-map deciding your next move, you could leg it straight to the main objective, saving your outpost's power which effectively acts as your movement points. Or you might fancy a detour, tackling extra side missions in the hopes of snagging some shiny loot to pimp out your outpost. More often than not you'll want to take the scenic route, after all your outpost is your castle, your kingdom, your local boozer, where everybody knows your name. With each mission, you'll need to do an extraction of the loot, shipping off your booty for the grand finale of each tour, the main extraction. It's like the last call at the pub, everything's got to come out, from the exotic guns, the spare turret parts that you've been hoarding, or the minerals you found along the way. Then it's down to the wire in what turns into a proper bar brawl, but with lasers and mechs. Hold your ground against the hordes, hence the need for an upgraded outpost and you'll wrap up the tour pockets bulging with your hard-earned swag of course foul and you lose everything but here's where the needle gets a bit stuck in the groove these missions they start to feel about as fresh as last week's leftover chinese takeaway i rummaged through every nook and cranny for loot but it wasn't long before it felt like i was just going through the motions a real slog rather than a treasure hunt the missions get as repetitive as a parrot the same layouts the same mission structure life's meant to be zesty full of surprises but this is like expecting a gourmet meal and getting beans on toast and that thrill of the hunt in Outpost Infinity Siege is further dampened, all thanks to enemies with brains like a bag of hammers. I sussed this out quicker than I hoped, the first few minutes in fact, when these mech muppets charge at you like they're late for the last train. No clever tactics, no nothing. Worse yet, shoot enemies in the head and they just stand there gawping like they're waiting for a Windows update to finish. It's all a numbers game with these lot, which is a right shame because the gunplay part should have been the dog's bollocks but it ends up feeling a bit undercooked. As for the arsenal, there's no shortage of toys to play with, loads to pick up, tweak and tinker with. But the reality is you can just go through each level and collect what's needed and then you end up sticking to your base like it's your local on a Friday because of the sheer oomph 
that your turrets pack. Before you know it, those big brawls and now biting extractions fall down to you just darting about, cobbling together ammo and keeping your turrets moving. It's not that it's a total drag, it's just that the shooting here feels more like an afterthought, like putting on a fireworks display and forgetting to bring the matches. One of the shiny bits in Outpost Infinity Siege though is how you can flip between that RTS mode and FPS mode on the fly, as if flipping through TV channels. In RTS mode, you can splash your resources on a bit of home improvements, maybe slap down a wall, chuck in an ammo crate, or give your shield replenisher a bit of a boost. There's a fair bit to fiddle with here too. I've got to tip my hat to how the UI makes building up your fortress as easy as pie. But then it makes you wonder, doesn't it? It's bang on brilliant being able to spruce up your base and watch from on high as a sea of enemies try to crash your party. But after a bit, you're left scratching your head thinking, and what of it? Now I've been a bit cheeky calling this RTS mode and that's on me because it's not really playing ball with what you would expect from a true RTS. Straight from the horse's mouth here, the developers themselves, it's more of a tower defense shindig. So this whole bird's eye view feels a bit like a party trick when in the cold light of day, you could run the whole show in first person mode, building up your base amidst the chaos, much like any other game where you're holding off the hordes, i.e. Gears of War. It's nifty, don't get me wrong, but it's just got me wondering if it's all just smoke and mirrors to make the same old song and dance feel a tad more novel. So after giving the old one-two about the first person mode and the tower defense mode, we move on to the grand finale, the mission hub, your very own mother base. This is is where you strut about tinkering with your outposts, crafting turrets and firearms from the loot that you've already nicked, or researching new tech from blueprints that you found out in the wild. The joint's bustling with characters, from a saucy AI with morals looser than a gambler's purse, to this geezer here who's about as likeable as gonorrhea. In time, you can rustle up a crew, dive into the online ruckus, which bizarrely only becomes an option after you put in a few hours, or you can spruce up your base to buff off your special moves. But blimey, the voice acting is about as refined as a toddler spitting out their first words. The script must have been knocked up by an intern during the writer's strike and the animation, let's just say, even Stevie Wonder would politely decline a gander. It's a right mess doing nothing to reel you in or keep you hooked. Still, it does give off a bit of that StarCraft hub vibe. But if you squint past the muck, sprucing up your outpost with all bits and bobs you've scavenged, it does have its moments bringing some satisfaction. Though I've got to say, there's such a clutter of items to collect, it feels like you're rummaging through a jumble sale. Trimming the fat ear could have made this a bit more ship-shaped, streamlining the experience, and saved us from getting bogged down in a swamp of surplus items. Graphically, Outpost Infinity Siege ain't exactly a looker. In fact, it's a bit of a munter to put it kindly. Sure, it's got the rough charm of a back alley bruiser, but let's be straight, it could use a nip tuck, maybe even a full on Hollywood makeover. Now I get why the developers might have gone easy on the eye candy, cramming the screen with a small army's worth of enemies without turning your rig into a glorified space heater is no small feat. Games like City Skylines 2 prove this, where ambition runs into the brick wall of performance. There's at least some method to the madness of dialing back the detail here, but crikey does it have to look like it's been dragged through a hedge backwards. Textures that look like they've been through the wash a few too many times, depth of field effects that make everything look like you're squinting without your glasses on, and animations that move with all the grace of a three-legged race at the school fair. The art's so basic, giving off vibes of Fallout 3 back from 16 years ago, and frankly, that looks way better. Then there's the performance. Me, I'm running a beast of a machine. Think top of the line, spare no expense gear, using a 4090, 64 gigs of DDR5 and a 13700K CPU and even then cranking everything to the max at 4K the numbers aren't what you would call brag worthy. Now I've been lucky, dodged the bullet on crashes and whatnot, but a quick look at the Steam reviews tells a tale of woe and misery for a lot of people. So I've been laying into the graphics something fierce here, but don't get it twisted. When it comes to the crunch with all hell breaking loose, hundreds of mechs bearing down on you and your turrets spitting lead like there's no tomorrow, the game manages to pull off 
a bit of a chaotic charm. It's a bit like a scrap in the pub car park. Not pretty, but undeniably entertaining. I wasn't exactly picking my jaw up off the floor at any point, but I'd be lying if I said I didn't find myself having a bit of a giggle and miss the carnage. Soundwise, Outpost Infinity Siege is a bit like a pub band. Some decent moments, but mostly you wouldn't miss it if you stepped out for a smoke. There are sparks of brilliance, mind, like the wail of sirens kicking off an extraction, the buzz of outpost alarms, or the boom of a distant explosion. But for the most part, the audio feels like it's been phoned in from a budget studio. The turrets, though, they've got a bit of them. The cackle and roar like a proper Saturday night. But the pew pew of the guns sounds like they're spitting out apologies instead of bullets. The voice acting's already been flogged like a dead horse here, but I'll tip my hat to the tunes. The music's got its moments, weaving in and out, laying down a dramatic backdrop when it counts, lifting some scenes from mundane to, well, slightly less mundane. So, chucking it in the mixer with the graphics, the sound's best described as serviceable. It's like the background noise of your local fish and chip shop doesn't exactly spoil your supper, but it's not like you'll be raving about it to your mates. The sound keeps you in the moment, but hardly grabs you by the nuts and holds you in place. Wrapping your head around Outpost Infinity Siege for review is like trying to now jelly to the wall. Tricky, because you've got to tip your hat to the team behind the ideas. The devs have gone and chucked a bit of everything into the mix, haven't they? Fair play to them for having a go at something as ambitious as this, knowing full well it could go tits up. And I'll be honest, I had a bit of a romp with it, but sadly it doesn't quite hit the mark on any of the fronts it's aiming for. The tower defence bits, they're all right, but you won't be scratching your head over any brain-busting strategy. The shooting does the job, but it won't have you leaping out of your seat. Collecting loot feels like you're filing your taxes at times, sucking the joy out of what should be a cheeky bit of treasure hunting. And the graphics and sound, they're holding the fault sure, but they won't knock your socks off. But here's a shout out to the devs. Thank you for having a swing at pushing the envelope. With a bit more spitting polish and maybe a sharper focus, there's definitely room for a game like this. The score I'm dropping is a nod to the game as it stands, but not the spark of the ideas that are bubbling underneath the surface. Until next time, my lovelies, have a good day. Reggie, out.